to stand with us and uh, we'd like to begin with a prayer and then a remain standing for the pledge, please. I'm going to call on uh, County Engineer Lynn Ross to open us with prayer, please. Uh, let's pray. Kind of follow again, just thank you this day. Thank you for this time to see you, Father. We can uh, uh, celebrate the birth of our, your son, Father, our Savior, our Redeemer. Uh, and for his birth, Father, and his life, um, his death, and his resurrection, Father, for it means to Christians. Uh, be with us today in this meeting, Father. Uh, give us the, uh, the knowledge to make decisions possible, Father, for the betterment of the county. And uh, watch over some, uh, as we spend this uh, holiday season, Father, <coughs> for safe travels. With our, with our families. Uh, I ask all these things. Hold on and pray, Father. Amen. Amen. Join us in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Oh. We do have a, a quorum, so we can proceed. The uh, first item on the agenda is uh, scheduled public hearings, and this is related to four road closure petitions. Lynn, I'm going to ask you, if you will, to come up and uh, give us explanation or description on these four areas, four sites, and uh, then we'll move forward to see who's here to speak on those issues. Okay, um, well, I, I don't know what list I got these in, but we'll go through them one by one. Okay. Um, the first road um, that we have uh, is, is Toucan Road um, that I've got on, on the, the first printout you see right there. And this is on uh, US 29 up there off of Sims Road. Um, this road was actually, it's kind of an odd one to kind of describe because uh, the county has never maintained this road. This never was a, a county road although it got named to be a county road. Now one has it on record as being a, a public road, and it's not a public road. Um, the road was bladed once by the county that we know of historically. I think back in the 90 flood, 90 or 91 flood, uh, the main culvert at the canal there blew out, and nobody had a way to get it out of that little community right there, that little uh, neighborhood there. So they, they bladed the road the one time, and, uh, and how it got named the road, I, I, I don't know. So, but that's that's that one. So we so we received a petition on that to close it, but yes. there are other landowners affected. So yes, all right. Now the, the landowners, um, the joining landowners, because um, it does go to uh, uh, Bill McLean, Six uh, X Railroad, and Miss Serena uh, Garrett are the are the landowners. So uh, that was the petition. Um, to, to, to get it closed. I want to like, off our records as well because like I said, it's not, it's not a county road, so. And none of them opposed to closing it, but they're all. No, uh, like I said, the road is actually on uh, CXX Railroad is the actual owner. Um, it's where the left road is actually located on. And we'll, we'll open for, in case there's somebody here for or against today, we'll have that conversation as we. But uh, the road is actually on CXX Railroad. Okay. Um, it's where the road is located, so. But, uh. But that's that's it. No, we, we we sent notifications out for this, and um, everything, as far as I know, is, is good to go on that. So, um, and I did speak. To, uh, Mr. Bill McLean did um, get a hold of me, and I, sp I spoke with him because um, uh, just to make him again aware of the, of the meeting uh, today, because I met with him earlier about possibly putting a road in on the top side of his property. Um, but he would just want to make double sure that you know he had an access way to get to get into his property. Um, if this was ever were to be, like I say, it's on CSX Railroad property. The road okay. is. So if they decide to close it or they abandon it, the railroad and it becomes uh, the joint landowner's property. If something happens then, he would make sure he had a way to get in and out on that on that. Y'all prefer to deal with each one case by case. All right. This, this is Toucan Road. Is there anyone here to speak for for or against? Yes, ma'am. Just to fix it. 
But is it is it still your? Is it you've already got it from six X or no? No, but there was no way you have you couldn't draw down the so, range. Yeah, so what, I guess the concern would be if we if we abandon it as a public road, is it your intent to gate it? Um, I have discussed it with Power South to gate it. Although it's not your road, uh, your property. It, they have an easement. They have an easement to have, for access, but does that give you the um, right to gate it? According to the railroad, since they have no land to access to or use in over 10 years, it should go back to us. Um, power South does have a strip on there mm -hmm. where they have power lines, and they have agreed to put a gate up with them having a key and access if we decide to gate it. <coughs> Our main issue is that we have people driving rangers and jeeps jumping the hill where the septic tank is that's over a ten thousand dollar septic tank on there on your property yeah, on, yeah. yes mm -hmm. on our property i agree with her on that um, and we've already had press trespass and targets on a neighbor who decided to take the barn and make it his own and destroy the land and started burning trees off of it because in their thing it's the county road even though it goes to it's my house Like I said, it is on 6X property. I mean, I understand what you're saying. There is, and the Power South does have an easement that, that runs to the property. Um, and basically, the US 29 right away is 40 foot from center line. And then there's a 100 foot easement for um, 6X owns that 100 foot strip from the, that's offset from the, the, the uh, state right away right there. And then they actually have an additional because that that sets the center line of that power line easement on on them, and they've got an additional 50 foot easement onto Miss Garrett's property for their their right of way through there. Like I said again, but the the, the road is technically on 6X railroad, and and yes, uh, Power South does have an easement that runs through there. It's 100 feet wide, and it basically hits the. Is meandering. there is, is there easement? Parallel to CSX property, or is it on the CSX? Yes, it basically right hit there. Uh, it's, it's, it. The road is technically all on uh, CXX. Um, I've got the survey, um, and I did a, a aerial photograph to just to kind of see myself where it was hitting. Um, but uh, well, I, th I, th I think my my point would be I we I have no problem with you using that as a drive. That would make sense, and that's what you've been doing. But also would be concerned about a neighboring landowner who is using that as a drive. Regardless, I assume if they can get on through on a four-wheeler, then that maybe that's the way they're accessing property. We have cameras up, and in the last two years that we've been building, there has been Bill and Blaine has not shown up to that property. Um, but what I about next? What about next year though? How is he? How I does have, he access? It? I have seen Tommy pictures of property to show that he cannot access it from us. Like I said, I discussed with the DOT for him to have access. All he has to do is call DOT, and they will give him 29 access. But now we've had to jump through hoops to get it going because, according to the county, it's a county road. Okay? County water couldn't even give us a meter without us having to dig through a county road because they wouldn't touch it. And they couldn't put it from Seams because there's a cement creek. So we have water meter on 29 that has to go through the road itself that we all have to pay money for to get going. I mean, basically, if you look at the pictures, it looks like a field. It's a dirt drop. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's never been maintained by I us. Mean, never, I mean, it's never been maintained. It's never been maintained. It's never, the county doesn't pay any money towards it. They don't do anything for it. It's ours. It's been ours for over 30 years. But has six has given y'all anything in writing that it's that they've 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 given that to y'all. Have y'all got anything in writing? The only thing I have, um, I've been an owner. My sister has been an owner for six years of two of the acres. I took ownership of the other acreage. Um, <coughs> me and my dad. All I think I have in the railroad is them asking for us to sign the property over. And I believe I sent that to you back when we started. But have y'all signed, have they signed it over? No, it was never signed. 
Yeah, we need to get that situated. If that's the case, then um, we could do something. That's the case that us because it was never signed over. But I don't see. I don't think we can give right away away yet, or or the road. It's not really ours to give because it never was a road. But I'm, I'm just saying, as far as legal purposes, because I know the McLeans do use that to go in and out. Uh, if they if they if they ever do go in there, yeah. um, um, I just if we do it as is, I just request that they may even put, give a lock to them. That way, you can keep all the other intruders out. Mm -hmm. And whatever, if he ever decides to go in there personally, I guess he could. We could make a uh, make it make an arrangement where he could have a, a key to the gate, and he it is an adjoining what's landowner. The, what's the cost of a of a drive cut uh, off of twenty nine? If you it's a deep cut right there where that railroad is. Yes, it is. It's a big. It's a big. It's it's taller than this. It's probably twice these ceilings so right what, here. What is deep. the cost of that, Lynn? It'd be probably twenty thousand dollars probably to build that drive, if not more. And then I'll request for y'all to maybe one on one meter to our property, which is that'd be a. That'd be something with the war authority there. We don't do water. Um, but we do control uh, cuts and county roads, so I'm a little interested that y'all and Doug and put in a water line because we wouldn't give, I don't know if we, if, if the water authority. It's just a bad deal. This road got named a road, and I just, we yeah. wouldn't even be here today if it so hadn't been to called a road. Abandon a problem is what we're trying to do, but we also need to make sure to take care of anybody well, we're just, else. We're just trying to take whatever says it's a county road off mm -hmm. and let miss garrett and yes because she had I've, I've met with her several times and we and she, i agree with her she had trouble getting to get even a mailbox mm -hmm. put up put up there um because i think you had so, maybe had a toucan was it a toucan address? Yeah, address so is this your is this uh is this the only frontage on your property is yeah. this road you don't have frontage yeah, on uh, sam's it. road yeah, so, I, so I find it. So it was it was used as a road to get to your property, your sister's property, and Bill McLean's property. I mean, obviously, it's been an access point. Whether he used it or didn't use it, it was an option for him. It was. So, but, wanna, but whether we claim it a county road or we close it to say it's not a county road, none of that falls back. Unless on you us. plan to put a gate up, and then it affects the other landowners. And I just want I'm just making sure that we're clear. On, on how you know, how the other landowners get in and out, without having to go to the cost of going to court. I mean, right now they have they have open access, just like she does. But then all of a sudden you get into a court situation, or building a driveway off of twenty nine for twenty five thousand or whatever. No, they, so they, those they are, would build it for them. They would give them access. Well, uh, giving access is on the driveway, than them building private property. They're not building a driveway. I don't think they may, but I don't think the works so. on is uh, the work be off county be off state right away. They're not going to get off county right away. Yeah. The state right away to do that. Right, that's correct. Yeah, they give them access on on two twenty nine up to the right away, which is forty foot from center. But beyond that point, it'd be him. That's where the, the cost would occur. Plus, I've, I've looked at that cut. It's pretty extensive right there. It'd take probably a thousand, two thousand yards of dirt to build a drive. So I'm just trying to look at the map right here. So when you turn on off of 29 on the Sims Road, it's the very first. I have pictures of you To the right. Well, I got one, but I just trying to figure out to the right. Basically, is that the only between the yellow? I don't know. We were just talking about the same thing. Miss Garrett's got a house built. Okay, back in here. Back in there, yeah. Okay. Right here. Okay. okay. Back, come because it wasn't showing your house on this. It was just showing like when you turn in, there was a trailer <coughs> right on the left. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. That's the mouse. Okay. What is this? That's an old trailer. So your, your residence is basically Nothing halfway down that road. I just don't see why. They just built a brand new house right there. Yeah. There's a new house built here. Okay. That's her mouse. Since we still have they were driving over. Playing on it right there, okay. right there. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. been wanting it closed because of trespassers coming in there, getting to her property and well, tearing it up and jumping. I'm still confused. Said, Probably can't just say that. Yes, close it if that's what she wants. I, I, I agree. I mean, I don't know why we can't just say county's done with right. it. Everything Is that else. That's what you want. That's what I want. But the county be done with it. I mean, you're all, you're not taking care of it. Right. I mean, yeah, it's never, it never was a road. We're, we're, it never was a road. We'll come back, we'll come back to that. As far as I think we need to finish the public hearing, and then we'll come into business. Okay. But I agree. It never was a it never was a county road, and uh, um, 
I said, Mr. McClain did call me and, and discuss concern about having having access. He just wants access. Yeah. He doesn't really care, but I don't think he wants to spend the money, twenty something thousand dollars, um, if he can still use that uh, road to, to access the property. I think if he were just have a key to the gate, um, like saying, until we get the letter signed by CXX, I don't see why we, we can technically legally put a gate up on the, the well, property. We're not going to be the ones putting. The well, gate no. Up. Well, that's what I mean, though, but I don't see how they can can technically uh, close off, some, put a gate up on, on somebody else's ownership until they actually take ownership of that property. Right, but that's not our concern. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, who grants easements? Uh, Power South has an easement through that property. Who does it? Judge. That's what I thought. You'd have to go, you have to have access to your property, so if you get an easement, you still put your gate up or whatever, but ever who's in there would have to have access to their property. This way, I under, always understood it. Now, but I didn't for <coughs> sure who granted the easement. But I know once you got an easement, it's that easement couldn't be blocked yeah, without access. Indeed, you know, there's a there's a line in there that says access road here, such and such, and all that. Sometimes it's not the deed. If it's not the deed, somebody needs access, and they have to go upstairs for being bound to give them access. So he's going to give them access. But Best route. But I admit, it's, it's been aggravating for Miss Garrett. I know she, what yeah, the trouble she's been going through on this. I'll see that. Is anybody else here to speak on that? For or against? Okay. What's the second property? Uh, the second second property on, on the one I didn't, I didn't there no particular order. The second one is uh, Starflower Road. And this is on 55 South um, on uh, five near Five Runs Creek. The state uh, highway department has been working on plans to replace that bridge, and they requested for us because that there's a new alignment of the road and the way that alignments coming into that new bridge are going to put it on the downstream side or the west side of 55. And the way this road's coming in with the new grade of the, the bridge, the ramping and just the uh, the point of access to the bridge, the, with the closest to the bridge where it would come out. The state had concern about that, so they they they, were, they contacted our office, our engineer's office, and requested that we maybe see if we couldn't close that road off. And all I'm doing, I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not closing the road. I'm just closing the point of access to 55. We talked it'll about still this. be, it'll we, still yeah, be a we've already talked couple about months. Ago. Yes, it'll still be, it'll still be. This one will still be a county maintained road. It just gonna come off of 32. It just it'll be a dead end road now instead of having full access to 55. We're just closing the access off to 55 is all we're doing it'll still be a maintained road all we're doing is closing the access point and that's starflower road is anybody here to speak on starflower road closing or not and there's closing? there's just there's just and there's just two two landowners <coughs> there's two landowners y'all good with yeah. all of you okay yeah we're, we're maintaining the road yeah we've done a lot of work we bought a lot brought a lot of rock and we did some clearing and stuff on the road so we're getting it in good the letter said that you are we're considering closing Really yeah, it's just it's just a, the point. It's, and like I say, it's just yeah, the beginning and the beginning in the closure is really right there on 55. That's where if you see on the map, that's where, we're just closing the access point to 55 off. All right. Um, and it still will be a county maintained road. We're just getting it where you just can't access 55. And it's for more for safety precautions with the new bridge alignment and, and construction. Any other questions or comments on that? Okay, so they're going to close it at 55. And y'all going to maintain it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we're going to still maintain it like we always have. We brought a lot of rock in it. We still got a little bit of work at where we're going to turn to the, make a little spot at the end. Because, I mean, I don't, there's no uh, school bus, I think, to use that road right now. School bus uses. Yeah, school bus uses. Oh, they do use. But they don't. Use that cut through. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but I think that's just for a cut through for them because there's no yeah. pickups on that road, so they could be safer actually going down to the main road and turning. The school bus does it to to keep from having to go a, a, a mile. And we're going in and backing out and, and yeah. back north. But like I said, we're still, we're still maintaining, the, we're going to still maintain the road. Um, just like I said, it's just, it's just the point of access. What's just the closing that point of access. What's the length of that road, do you know? Um, I got it right here, Greg, on a second. It's right there. at 1,000 feet, right okay. at 1,000 feet. Right. Yeah, there's a little bar scale there. Anybody else here to speak on that or raise questions? Okay, what's the other one? Now the next one, 
in the list is uh, um, Perry is our next picture. Which one? Perry is the next picture. Yeah, Perry Road, yeah. Um, I was contacted by the landowner. 9-1 does not show any records of this, and this is more or less a uh, mapping and appraisal. It just shows an old road on the map. I've gone back and looked at historical pictures, and you can even see, the, I've, I've gone back to the 40s, you don't even see a, a, a road um, on this. And it's just the one landowner, and it runs through his property. It runs from, it's right there. This property is, is located right on the, the Florida line between uh, Yellow River and our, our public dirt road, Walker Road. Um, and it basically parallels just a few feet off the uh, um, the state line, and it shows it literally going to to the river down there. But this, the landowner owns all the property, and it's, it's the uh, nine one does not even show it. It's just on the map again. Appraisal still showing as a, as a public road. Is what this is. It's, tr it's strictly just a so mapping. It's been, it's been long abandoned. Yes, really. Yes. Just go through the legal process. All right. Is anybody here to speak on that? Okay. Have you spoke with the landowner? Yes, ma'am. And he's in agreement? Mm -hmm. yeah, he's one of the petition to have it. He just wanted, wanted that cleared up on the mapping and appraisal side. Okay. All right. What's the next one? Uh, next one is Jackson Road in town of Red Level. Um, this road is located near the south community, just, just south of the south community. Um, it parallels uh, County Road 21 and uh, Beasley Road. And it's just a little connector between both those roads. And this road is roughly uh, about 300 feet long. <coughs> it's just a short little <coughs> section of road. Um, and uh, now the Nolans had requested the close of this road. And um, um, single landowner. Yeah. And it's just a little cut through between two of the roads. And the roads basically the Beast Road is just an, the old. I guess it's probably the old 50, old 55, old 55 old, yeah. Old. It's just been va vacated, basically. I mean, it's still a, a road, but uh, it's just a little connector point between down, the, basically the extension of downtown red level um, and this road right here. So and that road just cuts through the Nolan property and yeah. they requested to close it, turn it back over to them. And there's another public road just south of this. I mean, literally just about 500 feet south, there's another uh, Cut through, road. Road. cut through just yeah. like this one. Yeah. Okay. Anybody here to speak on this road? Raise questions, comments. Okay. Uh, what was the name on the? Uh, was it Starflower Road? Is that the? Well, fifty-five. Yeah, that's one of them. That's fifty-five. 55. Yeah, Starflower. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Anybody else have a comment on these? On these road closure petitions, for okay, we'll, we will close the public hearing part and move right on in. If there's no opposition, we'll just go ahead and deal with these while lens of the microphone. Uh, so, I'll move into the business session. So, we have petitions on four roads. I think we probably can handle all of them in a single motion. Is that appropriate to do, or we need to do it individually? I'll make a motion, and we proceed with the closures. Okay. Or there's a motion and a second. Are there steps beyond this that are needed? Um, no, the notification, I mean, just that your vote and then the closure and notification of the closure. So okay. we can follow up with that. All right. We have a motion and second. Any other questions or comments on it? All right. We'll vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. All right. Those are. And we're getting more and more of these. I, um, we're getting more and more of these. I had a, a petition by two landowners on uh, H.D. Wilson Road that I'll be bringing forward probably first of the year. To uh, I got the petition um, in my office to maybe close a, a portion of that road, just a dead-end portion of that road. They're not closing the whole road, but just where um, it's lengthy, and uh, they're just about halfway down. They want to close it to keep point of access out. They just got a lot of people. I think a lot of drug use, what the what guy was telling me, going down that road. And it's a problem. All these little roads, like, like Miss Garrett's situation, if there's a public road, you can't keep them off of it. Um, um, but uh, but I think it's, it's something very similar to what she was going through as well. So just a lot of people going down a road just because it's a public road. Right. So, Thank you, Lee. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it.
Next on the agenda is a public comment from elected reported officials. Uh, Judge, do you have anything for us today? Mr. Patterson? The only thing I have is that we, you know, in the tax season, and we appreciate everybody paying their taxes, and I'd like to also remember to say that if you're over 65 or disabled, to make sure you sign up for those exemptions. Okay. Where do you sign for that exemption? Sir? In your office? Is that yes, sir. Our online, but our website has that form. You can do that <coughs> Okay, good. All right. Sheriff, you have anything for now? Come back to you. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm on the agenda later. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Uh, commissioners, the consent agenda is next. The minutes of the November 14th meeting were emailed to you for review, and you've seen the uh, accounts payable and payroll listing for the month of November. I'll ask if there are any corrections or changes that you noted or would entertain a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda. I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll second. Motion and second to approve those. Anybody else have anything you noted? If not, we'll vote all in favor. Say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, those are approved. Under old business, we uh, wanted to consider approval of amendment an amendment 909 resolution and we had asked our attorney to review this along with the administrator and I'll call on them to bring us up to date on that item at this time. Okay, included in your packet are two proposed resolutions um, uh, uh, that are legally... Um, I don't know that they made it to the rest of the agenda. But they have been forwarded to us. Okay, I, I'm sorry. Um, then in, that were or, that were forwarded to you. Um, uh, they are uh, created under the authority of Constitutional Amendment 909 um, under employee benefits um, and recognition. Um, uh, one is for a safety incentive uh, program uh, to support uh, and promote uh, workforce safety and to acknowledge that um, in your workforce if certain metrics are met by your employees, um, you know, no accidents, those types of things. Um, and the second is to um, have an employee appreciation program um, where plaques or certificates may be given for people who meet um, anniversary milestones and to also honor your employees um, with a luncheon. Um, and so if you were to uh, adopt those resolutions, then those programs um, would be available to you. Um, they are um, to be considered on an annual basis if for any reason <coughs> funding was not appropriate um, or available. Um, you, you have the annual option to either um, uh, put a pause on the program or to continue it in, in each year. All right. Commissioner, she, uh, she mentioned those were forwarded to you by email. I know you had a chance to review those. We had some discussion at our last meeting. Any other questions uh, for the attorney or the administrator on those, those two resolutions? No, I suppose with Karen, that does include the safety incentive, includes full and part time. Yes, it does. Yes. It does. Okay. If there's nothing else, there's a, it would be appropriate to entertain a motion to adopt the resolutions if you choose to do that. Motion. A second. Motion and second to adopt the two resolutions referenced related to Amendment 909. Uh, any questions, comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, those resolutions are adopted. Thank you all. Yeah. And thank you all for your work on that. It's a lot easier to say it here than it was to get it on paper. <laughs> it's pretty extensive. Uh, the next, uh, under moving on to, on to new businesses, consider out-of-state travel for some deputy training. Page 29 and 30 have pertinent data or information. Commissioners, uh, call on the administrator or the sheriff. Sheriff, come on up to the microphone. I'm sure we'll have a question or comment or anything you want to share with us related to this issue. Okay. And this is just some out-of-state training that the officers would be going to uh, to better our department. Okay. And uh, offer uh, you know, better better training for our officers as well as uh, better options for our community. What is the training actual chair? Which uh, which one is it? It's the one in Pensacola. It's the one in Pensacola. Um, that's uh, the strategic law enforcement interview course. Right. It's 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 an interview course down in Pensacola. Is it for investigators or yes. deputies? Yes. Investigators? Both. Are these two guys new? 
I don't even know their names. It, oh. Eric Bradley. Eric Bradley. Philip Philip Baird. Baird. Yes, they've been here a while, and it is this is for the <coughs> deputies or investigators <coughs> presented to deputies. Oh, these are deputies, not mm -hmm. investigators. Right. Okay. Will this uh, go towards their continuing education credits? Yes. Yeah. And how many do they have to have a year? Uh, they're required to have 16 a year. Okay. So one travel is to Pensacola. Where's the other one? Do you remember? They're both in Pensacola. Oh, okay. They'll carpool. Okay. Any other questions on this, or is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion. Your motion a second. to approve and a second to approve the travel. If there are no other questions, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. All right, those are approved. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is consider purchase of new software for records management. This is your office as well, I think. You, That's right. Anything you want uh, to share with us on that? Uh, we, uh, we had some questions about the bid process, and uh, I believe we have answered those questions. We currently have two software companies we've been looking at. We've picked one that uh, that would be best for us, uh, and that is with Southern Software. Uh, we're just right now we're in the trials, just trying to figure out where we want Southern Software or Central Square. Central Square currently is not NIBR certified, and that's a requirement that we have. However, they've t reached out to us and told us that they would be NIBR certified by the beginning of January. Uh, before this ever starts, they reached out to us this morning, or I didn't know that yesterday when we were discussing this. Uh, they reached out to us this morning, uh, so we're still looking at which one to go with, which so, one's best. So which one interacts uh, best with 911 and other local well, agencies? Right now, 911 is with Central Square. Okay. okay, Op and Andalusia are with Southern Software. Uh, well, we work through 911, so it, it would make sense to go with Central Square. However, 911 is considering going to Central Square, I mean, uh, Southern Software as well. So I would like to see all of us on the same page so we can share information and cut down some of the call times. Right now, if, uh, if E911 gets a call, and it's in Andalusia. I have to hang up the phone and call Andalusia, and the process takes a certain amount of time. If they were to go to Southern Software, which I feel like they will, but I can't guarantee that, uh, then they can just send the call to Andalusia, and it, everything it would be. We would like to know everything that's going on in the county, whether it's in the cities or the counties, so we can be there to back them up. That's what we're trying to get to. Is there a significant difference in cost between the two companies? Uh, there is a difference in cost. I, re I just received a, uh, another uh, bid, I say bid, uh, proposal. proposal from uh, Central Square. Uh, the cost is very close and on the front end. However, uh, there's a yearly maintenance charge, and it's double what Central uh Central Square is double what Southern Software is. But all of it's within the confines of what we, we, we actually put toward our records management system. We, we want to go with what's best, for the, what's best for the department. I know we asked the attorney, I think, to review. The, was it these proposals that you reviewed? Um, there was one that I reviewed. Um, we need to make one change to the term of the contract if that ends up being yes. the direction you want to go. Um, but it sounds like maybe there's going to be another proposal. I'll be happy to take a look at that okay. um, and, and make sure that it's also compliant. Um, either one, because of the software element, um, you know, the, the bidding component is, is, is handled. Um, so you would be able to either you know, approve the purchase you know we can give you the yeah, information we, we, we basically proposals. just need to be able to approve a purchase for either one of them it does not have to be a, a bid type thing yeah. Karen any, any questions that you have from your end mm -hmm. that we need to consider to make sure it does not exceed the amount was logged in the yes. budget okay. and we, we don't want to exceed that either okay so we are we uh, would we be okay to move forward with an unknown, on either or? 
uh, and give approval under. One of them's got to, you didn't say one of them's got to get certified in something prior to. Right. So which one is not? Is well, the Central Square is the one that is not NIFR certified. They have recently received uh, uh, a statement from the state of what they have to do to become NIFR certified. And they're saying they will be ready by January the 1st. Uh, we can't we can't get it done before January the 1st. And, uh, uh, and, and if it's not in place, uh, if they don't have NIBRS in place, then we're not going to use it because we have to report to NIBRS. It's a requirement. Um, if they were to put it in writing that they would be done by a, a certain time and it would be prior to us, to our startup, I'm okay with that. But they'd have to put it in writing and <coughs> offer us a way if it's not done then we pull and, and go with but another. you was talking about the city of Andalusia and all of them are on what now they're okay. on they're on southern software which is the NIBR certified or not they are NIBR certified and you said they're cheaper too yes what was the total cost do you recall I don't have it in front of me, Miss Lynn. I just saw all of it on an email, I guess it was, we got where it was saying this was this, and I well, just didn't know it got was, to it, it they're, they're both around $80,000 mm -hmm. for the first year. Uh, uh, Southern Software is about $11,000 per year after that, whereas uh, Central Square is around $22,000 per year. Southern Software, uh, we would we would have to maintain our own hardware. With with uh, Central Square, they maintain the hardware, so it's kind of a tit for tat. Yeah. We just want to make sure we do the right thing. Right now, all of our uh, all of our computers that are in the patrol cars and everything, they have uh, Central Square's desktop. But there's certain buttons that we need to use that are not activated. So if, if say we went with the Southern software, do we have to buy a new? That's that's there? that's all within. They they include that in the. Right. That's put. That's put. That's training. That's everything. So, I think there's probably there's a consensus to move forward. I'm not sure how to move to, right now since we have an unknown about the second company. And which one? Obviously, it makes sense to me if you go to something that's going to interface with 911, Andalusia, and Op. Right, and, and and I'll I'll tell you, I I would like to be able to purchase this when everything is worked out. I need to know what E911 is going to do. That's that's and, what and I may need. We may want to wait and see what the, the decision of that board is until we. Yeah, they they, they meet on, some of them not swap over. Uh, and then they, all of a sudden we're got right. They they meet uh, they meet in a couple of weeks, and uh, and we should be able to know something by then. You know, let's just can we can I make a motion to table until that's until right. January to see what the nine one one board decides they're going Abs to do. Absolutely, uh, I think. We don't, we don't have a motion, so we don't have a table. We'll just, by consensus, we'll agree to put it under old business at the next meeting for consideration. Okay. And we'll have our answers by then. Good. Okay. This has kind of been an issue for some time. Yeah. Oh, That's right. One, some, some couldn't read what the other one was doing. It they wasn't interchanged. Right. Well, we want to just move it. It's yeah. been like that, so maybe yeah. we can work that out. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. Yeah. Sounds like we're all in agreement on that. So let's move to item C, consider a request to purchase extra storage for equipment. And I think it's related to a four-wheeler or something. Right, we, something. we have a Bearcat, uh, and it's uh, we don't have a lot of money invested in it, but it's a, it would be a huge expense to have to replace it, and we want to take care of it. I would like to, out of discretionary funds, I would like to purchase a portable carport that this thing can be parked under. I just need a place to put it. And uh, I would ask that y'all would allow me to put it next to the jail in that, in that lot. If something had to be if had to be moved, it would be very easy to move. It's not going to be, uh, you know, no concrete and stuff like that. It'd just be just mount, mounted to the ground. <coughs> okay. So, is there a motion to allow no, to move forward with this? Bearcat. <coughs> it's oh, that's an armored the vehicle. The that's killer machine. Okay. Back. I would prefer that you didn't put it there. I know it's going to be difficult to find a place. But my reasoning being, if that we ever added on to the jail, 
I would think that would be the direction. I know that's not what's in the plan now, but who knows in the future. That's my opinion. But I know you are limited as to where you can put things. Well, we are limited on where we could put it. I didn't want to put it in a parking lot because the yeah. parking lot would take up some of our parking around here and it can be tight. And that's why I mentioned of having a awning, a portable awning, that if we were to add on to the jail, it, it's it's really nothing to take it up. Um, so it can be secured into the ground. Yeah, with like, with like trailer, you know, mo mobile home yeah. straps that screw into the ground Bankers. to keep the wind from blowing it away. That's all. Uh, it's, it's more height than it is width. Uh, the thing has a turret on top of it. Uh, but I would like to be able to park the Bearcat under it and maybe a boat. So we have we have a small boat that uh, is over at the jail under an awning and free up that space. So, so probably uh, a 20 by 20, something like that. 24 by 20. Uh, maybe 24 by 20. Um, nothing. We may have some level on our side, just across the fence next to the jail, but the gates go up into back to, to Kevin's uh, maintenance shop and all down there. On the right there behind, our, right behind our parking lot, there behind the sheriff's office. Possibly, we could look at putting it there. I just have to be able to access it quickly. That that that's all, um, because with the incident response team, it may not be a. It'll be someone in the incident response team that actually accesses okay. it. So, so Mister, what are your what are your wishes? Uh, I mean, they've named, mentioned a couple of places, and I understand it's going to be easy to move if that mm -hmm. if that becomes necessary at either place. So, and I and I have I'm going to move. We got a couple of covered trailers out here. I'm going to move them to the back. They don't have to be under anything. And get them moved. Okay. So all you, all that you should see out there is a uh, an awning with a bearcat under it, and we probably will keep our uh, trash crew pickup van and trailer out there. Okay. All right. Did you mention a price? No, I haven't even checked in a price yet. I'm gonna be purchasing the, the out of discretionary funds. funds. So it'll just be curious, man. it'll be under I it while the threshold. Yeah. I I don't have a problem with it as long as you find like you said somewhere where it's not going to be an eyesore or wherever you know I don't know if it needs to be behind a locked gate. The, it don't have to be behind a locked gate. That thing's locked up so tight you're not going to get in it anyway. Uh, we've welded certain locks on on it that uh, it's locked up pretty tight. Where do we get that? Uh, I purchased it from Lenco through Gov Deals. Uh, I used money from the Humvee sales to purchase it, so we're actually, the Humvees were free, mm -hmm. so we was able to run, make a little over $30,000 selling those, and I used part of that money to buy this Lenco and to get it fixed up. So we have about about $18,000 in fixing the Lenco up. Purchase it, transport and everything, so we did pretty good on that. And what's the purpose of it? Just it's to so keep our, know. you know, we have an instant response team, and uh, there's times that they have to go into a hot situation, and I don't want them shot. Uh, also, with our schools, if we had to make some type of uh, uh, emergency, uh, if we if we were in the need of getting some people out of a place <coughs> and pull a vehicle up there, then we can. We've got it fixed where the doors will lock open to use as shields. Uh, we're also, I haven't put these on there yet, but we are. There'll be some plates that flop down under the vehicle to stop any rounds from coming under the vehicle as well. So it's some pretty heavy duty stuff. It's on a Ford uh, F550 chassis. Uh, it's, I hope we never have to use it. I, I, I straight up don't ever want to use this thing for, for that kind of situation, but we're ready. How old is it? It's a 2006. A new one costs <coughs> around 250 to $275,000. Uh, this one, of course, is not you, but it's, it's only got like 50-something thousand miles on it. Uh, so it's it's still serviceable. Runs good. When we got it, we did. when we bought it, it was a little bit of a pig and a poke. Uh, but when we, we got it, we checked everything out. It's got new brakes. Uh, 
uh, the motor's in excellent shape. It's already had that uh, bulletproof uh, done to it where the studs are bad about stretching on these six liters. So that's already been done. Good transmission, air conditioning works well. So it's a good truck. Okay, so the question is uh, providing, giving our permission for him to uh, place a carport uh, on jail property or other county property that works. As long as you get it where it ain't eyesore. So. Is that a motion? With yes. that, with that yes. caveat? With, with, with that. Oh, okay. And I'll second it as long okay. as it's not on this front lot, unless that's the absolutely only place we can find it. I just don't like the clutter. That's just the woman in me. <laughs> it is. Okay. But I don't. I don't like the clutter that we've already got a lot, and I just think we need to maintain the front side of this place as best we can. Okay. So I've heard a motion and a second with a, several caveats. I mean, it's up to you to carry out the. the, the, the okay. Be careful. Be careful. All right. Any other questions, comments? I think we have enough to vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, same sign. I think it carried one to nothing, sure. Okay. No, it carried with a unanimous vote. Uh, next item is on uh, Sheriff's Patrol Vehicle Bid, page 31. Commissioners, you have a recap of bids, and I'll ask uh, the Sheriff to tell us what you want to tell us relative to this, and I'll ask Karen to... We have, uh, we, had, we had put the bids out to at least three people, three groups, uh, the only one that can deliver in the amount of time we need it is going to be uh, step one, uh, not, and it would be a Dodge Durango patrol vehicle. Let me back up off that. Um, the bid spec specified that the vehicle had to be meet certain criteria, one of such as V8, and it's got different guidelines on that. Um, it also required that anyone returning the bid had to be able to, to have the vehicle ready within 10 days or something. It was a certain amount of time. The bid specs we returned was, that was returned, the one that was the lowest bid was a V6, so it did not meet bid specs. So that one is disqualified for that reason. So that leads into the one um, that would be the lowest would be step one after that. So the recommendation is to uh, approve the purchase for $43,969 of uh, one vehicle from step one. Is this a new it's vehicle? For two vehicles. It's two vehicles. It's two vehicles at that price each. I'm yes, sorry. Yes, at that price each. And well, they this is. They come decked out or you have to put more we'll stuff We'll have to put the equipment in. Is that new? Brand new. Brand new. 23 or 24. Pursuit rated vehicles. Okay. It's pursuit rated vehicles. It was part of the bid And you feel good about the Dodge? I do. We and have that, there's several there's several departments around, not here in Covington County, but uh, Greenville uh, has been using the uh, Durangos and they've had good service out of them. Uh, I have no reason to believe that they wouldn't give us any. And what would these be used for? Patrol or patrol? Patrol. I know yeah. I saw on our uh, other sheet where we got a new something. 58,000 was that a patrol vehicle as well no that was the vehicle for me okay uh, what it was is I had bought a uh, police interceptor truck out of out of my funds uh, we needed we need to have these police interceptor tru trucks on the road and we can't we couldn't get one so I put mine on the road and purchased another one for something for me to drive and then and that was the only thing available was that truck so they're still getting three three vehicles on the road the, the equipment you're putting in there that's something you already have or is that something that have to be purchased later uh some uh, we're going some of it will be we already have uh <coughs> some of it will require a purchase uh you know a cage uh because I know one time me and you said something we was talking just in general one day and you said something about trying to get a universal mm -hmm. setup that way next time that's right that's what we're going to do uh, the cages are more vehicle specific however the consoles uh, a universal console that fits our equipment in it that's that's what I'm going to do these consoles that we're that we have purchased in the past that only fits 
the Chevrolet Tahoe. When the when the Tahoe is wore out, I have no need for this, unless and even and even then it's per model of Tahoe. So they make a uh, they make a console that's pretty much just kind of a rectangle and fit about anything. And these were budgeted in our budget. Yes. The vehicle that <coughs> Commissioner Holmes asked about, is it not a pursuit vehicle pursuit rate? It's not. Why, why is it not? Because I, 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 what I did, my vehicle was a pursuit vehicle. Right. Okay. With low mass, it's like new. I put it on the road so they could use it for pursuit, right, I and I just had to have something else to replace it. Okay, I didn't know. Why no, you don't need a pursuit. You don't. I, uh, our under our plain mark cars are not pursuit rated. Okay. Uh, uh, reason being is it's hard to come up with pursuit rated vehicles. They are. So we so buy if them off. Not pursuit rated. Do they still get in pursuit? Well, yes. If they need to, yes. A pursuit rated vehicle is. Uh, it would be something that, that, that stays on patrol all the time. Okay. So it has to have bigger radi radi radiators in it and stuff like that. Gotcha. that but they're pretty much the same. Other just than a, just few a few little, differences. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. okay, did we ever get a listing of all the vehicles? You know, we had, I think Greg had asked for that several think, meetings ago of all the vehicles that the county had now. We had the list that um, Alan had provided. Okay. And I think. Did y'all not get a copy of that yet? Okay, we can't get a copy of that. No. <laughs> Any other questions? I think y'all were wanting like mileage and everything on them or something. Just to have some idea yeah. of where we are. I think he finished yeah. that. I know I got one that had, they were doing tags, but um, I need to follow up and see if he actually did turn in the one with the mileage and all that. Everything on it, the wrecks and everything. Just to have an idea of what's still out there. Yeah. yeah. I make a motion. Approve the purchase. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Uh, we've asked a number of questions. Any more comments? Questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <coughs> okay, that carried five to nothing. I heard the sheriff vote. So. <laughs> I think that was the last one for me, guys. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, sir. Uh, next item is consider approval or uh, adoption of new county seals. Page 32 and 33 have pictures for us. I encourage you to look at those, and I'll ask Ms. Karen to update us on what, what the proposal is. Okay, page 33 is the um, proposed new seal for the county commission. You missed that yesterday. It's basically what's on page 32 with a little addition of the uh, year that the county was established. Um, we think that's something to be proud of and, and would like to have it on there. Okay. Um, the emblem for the road department, we've asked for a little bit of changes to that. The part that's been highlighted in, we've asked that to be shaded back so it appears to be more of a county road um, versus the one that was put on there. The center column, the very bottom emblem, I think is the one that uh, I would recommend. I think it just has a little better flair for, our, uh, for the arena. And then the third column is for the Point A Park, and we have asked for a modification as far as adding Alabama, so that people that are coming through, um, that it actually pinpoints this as Covington County, Alabama. Okay. Make a motion. <coughs> so we have a motion. Is there a second? Fine. Which one did you say on the middle column? The bottom. bottom. The bottom. What are these used for? Um, well, their uh, logos are on the side, or the emblems are on the door of the vehicles. They're on your business cards. Any. Um, uh, correspondence that we have on letterhead they're used to recognize us in different foundations whenever we are a partner with someone that would it's be the also <laughs> there's uh, there is some groups that put our our uh, image on the saddle from uh, <coughs> high school rodeo uh, little bridges rodeo they put our emblem on that okay. so it's just a wide variety okay I, I felt like that was the reason for the commission what are the county one but I didn't know what the rodeo in point a park was for like where did you, you just put them on a sign or something? I, it didn't matter. I just didn't know what they were used for. Okay. Well, hopefully you'll see them out a lot. Hope so. Now that we have some. Hope so. It looks like on the commission one that District 3 has somehow encroached on some of our... <laughs> oh, it, it hasn't. It looks a lot it bigger. It hasn't. Uh -uh. No, it's for real. 
Okay. <laughs> so I did hear a motion to uh, to adopt these Every as proposed. Bit of and it's I'm, am I hearing a second? Second. No, there is no further discussion or questions. All in favor say aye. Aye. <laughs> All opposed, same sign. All right, that's approved. Thank, Thank you. all. It's been a long time coming. Uh, next is uh, consider funding a uh, joint project with the city of Andalusia for sealing and striping at mm. Kiwanis and Arena buildings. Lynn, you may want to come up. I don't, uh, there may be other things you'll, it's about the point you would give us an update on your stuff. Uh, Michael, you want to move on now? Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, me and Greg got invited out to the <clears throat> arena Kiwanis building the other day with the city and the members of the Kiwanis discussed different things. Um, this is something that the city and I guess have been brought up before. And it was kind of a talking amongst everyone out there. I think uh, it's something that will benefit everyone in the long run. I think it's something that we can look forward to, maybe that we can join forces with the city and the Kiwanis or some other things later on down the road. Um, I know the price was what? What they show, Greg? Eighty something thousand, but our portion is not that. Our, our portion is half. They're proposing that we pay half. The city pay half, so eighty-five five divided by two. And the so city, about the city has, you know, some different plans out there, wanting to talk about different stuff in the future. And I think, you know, this may be something that that can help proceed with different ideas. I think. What's the what's your perception the of the That's right. of the need on the ceiling? <laughs> Are we at that point on that parking, as far as you know? And I know Kevin has kind of. It's actually probably past due, I would say. <laughs> is yeah. it? Kevin had done, uh, had caused some ceiling to be done on the USDA office parking already last year or the last two years, and uh, so this would this would be the next kind of the next step, and and this is just knocking it all out in a single step. So. And I I called a, a local contractor other than the one that got that gave the quote to try to check and see if it was reasonable. And the guy gave me just a square foot cost without even looking at it. Just gave me a square foot cost and a length per line on the striping, and it came within four hundred dollars with that within that eighty five thousand dollars. So the guy's dead on the money as far as competitive bid. I mean, he's he's it's it's very comparable to what other contractor would charge to, to do the work. So. And so I think the requirement is 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 uh, to get quotes and. Uh, so we, the recommendation is to, uh, for us to share the cost of this with the city of Andalusia. I have a question. And the city, okay, the city made that proposal. Yes, ma'am. Um, I noticed this paving project last night on the forms we got that, I call it paving. I know that's not what it is. I see it, yeah. Oh, but when I say it, just know I'm, I know what I'm, okay, as long as I call it paving. Uh, was submitted back in September. Matter of fact, I think it said on the 20th. So this has been an ongoing project for a while, I'm assuming. I don't know, the, I don't know if the city of Andalusia or Kiwanis, I don't know who even yeah. initiated okay. it. Yeah. You know, last, I think that was Monday, y'all had your meeting. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that right? Yeah, we were not aware of it, or I was not. Uh, so this was all news to us, or several of us. Um, and I find that strange, but anyway, with that being said, do we know how much is actually county property that's going to be paved versus city and Kiwanis? I've got that. I don't have that in the you front of Ms. Lynn, but I've got, I've got, it, got it written down. Okay, and it's um, a, what we're going to guess, 40% maybe? I think it's someone told 50, me that. It's about 50. It's about, I, I, it's 40 to 50%. It's, okay. pr it's almost up and down pretty much pretty even. All right. So the re then the remainder would be Kiwanis and city. Yes, so they would split mm -hmm. the 50-50. Okay. Um, I can get you that number. I can get you that number. Okay. When this is completed and not going into any other issues we've had, um, but are we going to have use of the parking area? Yes. I, I, I would that say been, that's that's that has be. been, but we know that we are. This is not going to be we might have it or we'll wait and see if we're going to have it and who gets upset about what. Okay. Okay. Um, I just truthfully think, and I know I always look like I'm the bad guy, I do think this is a good price from what just what you've said and from what I've been told. Uh, I know previously that Kevin has always tried to do this in segments so that it didn't cost the county all at one time, but I still think it's a good price. I think it's probably needed and it will make the place look better. 
So I'm all for all that. My concern, and I did speak with a Kiwanis member, my concern is until all the other issues are settled, I'm not sure that we're going to be doing the best for the county. I would like for Morgan to be able to intercede and just make sure that we have that understanding and then I'll be for it. But I think it's a great opportunity, especially for all three entities to finally come together. And I, and I will say, I think the city kind of initiated mm -hmm. this to try to help so. some stuff. To do that. And I, I agree, I'm, I'm all in, but I'm just concerned over. Because I know, like I said, there's some things said, like I said, and I just you know, mentioned it, there, there's an election coming up and the city just said, hey, let's go here and then after the election coming in the next, you know, March, that we'll have more discussion <laughs> later on. But I think the city's really wanting to... We want to advance that property as a whole and see it have a greater impact, I think. so. And there, I think the city expressed an interest in making an, uh, their investment in it. The, the operation, the, the understanding, and I know there have been some concerns recently, but the understanding for 20, 25 years is that those parking lots are shared depending on the need of the moment. If you go out there on a softball night, uh, that, that event may use all of what we might call the uh, Andalusia parking plus all of the Kiwanis parking. On a rodeo night, our event may lead to parking in, around the arena and over in the Kiwanis property. And then I've seen uh, like the Chamber Bank with their people parked all the way across all three. So it's just common use. It was all jointly, the, the <coughs> costs were shared when the original paving was done, uh, when it was expanded between the, and added the parking in, around the ball fields, which was a later development in, the, in our, our facility that were shared costs. Uh, Anyway, I, I hear what you're saying. I think that that's a appropriate concern. I think we all have it, but I do think it's a, uh, that we can move forward assuming that everybody's going to be sharing it like we have in the past. Karen, do you have anything to say? No, I, I do think it's needed, and I think it would uh, increase <coughs> the, uh, the looks overall of the complete complex. Um, it, it is hard whenever we have horse trailers and people coming in from out of state and they go up a drive and have to turn around and go back down to go out and go right down the road to go to another drive. So that, that would be a, a good concern, a uh, big concern of mine, is to make sure everybody feels welcome because if you have those dividers in, it just makes everyone feel unwelcome on the complex. And I know we had to go up and build an extra road just to get some in and out here a while back. We, we did. The, uh, I just I just want the issue settled. That's all uh, I'm asking for. Lynn, the ceiling on that on that asphalt. What's the purpose? Of it? Is that a life? Is that related to the life of the asphalt, or do you, come, do you have to come in? It and just helps seal some of the cracks, keep water from getting in, having base failures. <clears throat> so it does affect the life, the, yeah, it, the it wearing life it, yes. of that product. Mm -hmm. And then the striping, of course, is just for safety and yes. parking. You get more efficient parking. If, and if so. you could afford it, it, they recommend sealing every two to three years. Yeah, we've okay. never been able to afford really to do that. I think we've been more to like, you know, six to eight years when we've sealed it. And we have had issues um, recently at the courthouse, and I had it sealed. Mm -hmm. We had to patch some spots. And that's exactly all it is. Big garbage trucks come in and turn. Big truck come in and turn. That's worse than any, than a, than any recreational, you know, okay. car, truck, vehicle. And, and it, it causes problems. So in the cycle that we've been on, it's time to do our, it, our part of this for sure. Much and I think time the to do the around the arena. And mobilization for this, is, if you do it all at once, obviously you have a reduced cost in mobilization. You do it one time and it's all done. So, All right. What about patching? Anything that needs patching? Everything's good out there. Yeah, I, I mean, everybody good. have one or two isolated spots, but I, I think everything's in really good shape out there. I talk to the guy that's going to do it. He typically does it. If it's a bad hole, he'll patch it. Okay. Typically, that, he does that. And if it's just real bad, he will tell you on the forefront it's going to be extra. But if it's a small pothole, yeah. small pothole, you know, he passes it with some patch before he visits. Okay. This is a, happens to be the same contractor that you used last project you had. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. 
What are your wishes, Commission? I make a motion we join, like with the city, show us joining forces with another project, you know, really truthfully helps, I think it could, it could potentially be big help later down the road for us. Okay. All right, so there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. You might have questions on it beyond what you've already had answered. Are we going to stay with a verbal agreement on the usage? Uh, you said that they agreed that it would not be any problems. Well, we could look at giving something, you know, writing up it, whatever I mean. Mm -hmm. If they want, you know, to say that if we have an overflow, we can use theirs. And I know, I know, there's an there's an effort underway to to come to terms on what the commitments and agreements are, and that, that, that certainly is part that of that. needs to be part of yeah, it. Yeah, it does. When, it, when all is said and done and settled. Yeah. I think a suggestion on this, try to solve problems. Yeah. yeah. To agree upon. Okay. We have a motion and second. Anything else? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign? No. Okay. <coughs> so it passes 3-1. Uh, move to the floodplain, what's referred to as the floodplain development ordinance. You want to touch on that, the history of it, or what you presently do? Just give us a, a one minute overview. And I don't think we're ready, commissioners, to act on this yet. Uh, we've asked the attorney to work closely with Lynn on this. We'll make sure we're not stepping into a greater problem or a burden than we can maintain. So. Well, it's uh, all this kind of comes through ADECA, um, and we adopted these regulations to take part of the National Flood Insurance Program. And there's certain I've, I've been audited here over it um, years ago by ADECA, probably six, five or six years ago. As a matter of fact, when I first took over that county engineer, they came and audited this. And uh, um, the only issue that I see, and, uh, and Morgan's read into more, the, it's a 200-page document. Um, I think it's about 200 pages. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty lengthy. Um, but um, the only issue I really have with a lot of this stuff in the county, the only flood information we have on record that I can actually write a community letter on for insurance, for mortgage companies and things of this nature, because I get a lot, I write a lot of mortgage letters to, to insurance companies um, to help them out as far as getting flood insurance. And then being the floodplain manager, I have to write and say, all right, this is in a flood zone A. Elevation is, is X. Building is, is at elevation Y. And uh, they base their flood insurance off what, I, what we come up with. I don't actually do this, the work. I've, I, I've, um, surveyors do it. You provide, have, are you provided a database? That the, the only that database we have is by the um, that's by AEC, the old power what is now Power South? Okay. Um, that did an inundation study years ago on the flood on on the flood um, of the Gant and Pone dams. Um, they have a mile post set up from basically the, the county line all the way up through Gant. I think basically through the whole county. And I got a floodplain profile. It shows my hundred foot, hundred year flood elevation through all stages of the of the lake. So, with as long as I got a mile post, and it's based off our our what we call our NAD eighty three datum. It's a survey, it's what we use for our, our survey datum, for the count of the vertical the datum. And uh, um, based off that, I can pick a mile post. I, if, there's, if, there, if the creek is, or the river's meandering, I got a mile post, I can pick the house, John? draw a line perpendicular to the lake, uh, lake run. I can get a mile post, exact mile post. I can correlate, I got a profile made that I can pick on that mile post. It gives me the elevation, what the 100 year flood elevation is. Okay. They give me the house elevation or a new home. And it's, it's hard. You know, we try, again, I, I'm going to back up just a minute. We try to get up, we pass, we try to pass a building permit process years ago just to track the building in the county so I could kind of keep up more to date because if, if, if we don't have my go to sell mortgage company they can build in the flood zone and I may not even know about it there's no way for me to police that right. um, so um, and I think what Morgan's read into it more than I have and from a minor standpoint from her they're, they're wanting us to kind of have a permit process in place and we don't have one so um, that's that's an issue that we're gonna have to kind of work through you you uh as the floods, floodplain manager, and it goes to a DECA, but it, beyond that, it goes to FEMA. Yes. 
do you, you don't issue a permit if somebody's attempting to get flood insurance. You, you issue a permit that uh, uh, commits that they're building at a certain elevation. Yeah, they, is, got, they got to build to a certain elevation. So a, you, surveyor, a surveyor calls the, or say a, a, a homeowner calls, and we used to have signs up. The signs aren't much. It, just, it says you're entering in a flood zone area. Yeah. Um, but let's not have a permit process. It's, we try to fish net everyone we can. It's, so it's hard. So it's on the, it's incumbent upon the builder, whoever the homeowner yes. or builder is. And I work close with 9-1 as well. When or they get the, issued a new permit. Or the mortgage so. company who's going to require that they have some kind of flood insurance. Yeah. And this works for already existing homes yeah. as well. Because homes sell and they get a mortgage on it. And a lot of times they're in a flood zone. Now you can't help and they got to get flood insurance. And it's expensive. What would have happened when the audit happened, when the audit took place several years ago? They came in and audited your procedures. I assume that it was satisfactory i was more it was, it was, okay i had a lot of they said our records were better than most but so. so so what if you had not though what if we had failed the audit so to speak what well you can you lose your status in the, in the flood so management. residents in our county would lose, lose flood insurance yeah potentially and well they we could they could yes potentially so we yeah. don't so that's the concern and why it's important for us to act on this so okay but it happens i mean you get um some homes for every foot you, you're above the 100 foot elevation it drastically reduces your cost in flood insurance okay um but you have some that are, that are built below. There's a lot of homes built below the flood insurance level. The concept of permitting is not well received. It's though, not. Because that terminology was used several years ago, and there's just fear that there's going to be a mission creep and it becomes a, gener a revenue generator and on and on. So The only way I can do it is for um, our 911 office, when they issue a new building address or a new address for our homeowner, is we look and see where that thing falls in the area, then we we, we flag it, call them, say, hey, you're in a, you're in a flood zone. That's the only way I have to, to even do it. Um, and I say if, if an owner does already have an address and they're built on a lot they've had for years and built below the flood, I have no way can, of knowing. Can you uh, can, can we change their procedures so that they don't issue an address without contacting you as one of their steps? And then you can at that then communicate back through them when they give that address. They're saying you're. In I can, Stacy. Yes. Maybe yes. we should work that. Is that possible? You think, Michael, from the 911 side? I think so. Okay. Anyway, so there's there are several things to consider. I do think it's important for our community. But our but county. the only issue, and, and Morgan will, will probably touch on this. We have to adopt this by our next uh, January meeting, and uh, like I said, there's some language in there that really throws a lot of that stuff back on. What is this guy? So I think that um, I think that at the end of the day, this commission will need to act, and you will need to adopt um, uh, a resolution. Um, however, we have, and there is a time sensitivity. Um, however, the model that has been shared with us, I do think, creates some unintended consequences here in Covington County, and so I need the opportunity to work with Lynn. To finesse some of those provisions so that it fits what we're able to do okay. um, but we are aware of the timeline and I think that we can work together to get it to be what you need to adopt and to um, meet the notice requirements I believe the public notice has to begin February 4th maybe February 11th um, but we can bring to you a draft um, in January for okay. your <coughs> approval good deal Mr. do you have any questions or thoughts that you want to put out at this time? Uh, if not, I, I encourage you to talk to Lynn and or Morgan on, on questions that come up. Things that are well, if we can just see it and you know have enough time to, if we make any changes or have any questions that can be put into it before. So as you red line, red line it, and then when we get it, we can go straight to that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so that'll be on the agenda for the next uh, for the next meeting, which will be the first meeting of January. We'll have. Uh, and you said there is advertising and advertising component or, or notice component. It, yes. So um, once it's adopted at the local level, it, it is incorporated into the. I think it's. I, I'm going to have the terminology wrong, but basically the state's plan, which then elevates to FEMA, and I think there's a six month you know notice and comment period for the, the public at large. Um, so, uh, so they're the, responsible for that part of it. Though. Correct, correct, okay. correct. We just Greg, need, I, we need to have our portion done at the appropriate time to then fit into the larger schedule of notice. And I'll say it: this, the system is flawed. I will say, our permit maps, uh, it's a shaded area. That's all I have to go by. And uh, 
And when you start looking at uh, houses being in and out of the flood zone, you may have a, uh, just for example, right here at uh, Presswood Bridge down here, um, you may have a, a house that's 60, 100 foot above the, the river, but you know, going well, it's not going to flood, but yet it's shaded. So I have to kind of show that, hey, you're in a, you're, because I've got it shaded, you're in a flood zone. Um, so the, it's, not, it's not a perfect system. Um, I hope it gets better. There's LIDAR data now out there that they could actually improve their, their models, I guess, on the floodplain better if they would actually, if they would come up with some better maps. I'll even do it for them in our county, okay. especially on Gant Lake, because I've got data to, to support on Gant Lake. But I've, I've had residents over in Op, south of Op, right there in the town limits that, that suffer because we don't have any flood uh, data to support. So when I had to write a letter to them, I say, you're in a flood zone. I'm sorry, I can't tell you what that flood zone is, but you're in a flood zone because FEMA tells me that it is. Mm -hmm. So that's, it's, a, there's, it's a flawed system. It is, it's slight, it is flawed, but it's better than, it's good to have flood insurance that, you know, that the government's got you back in case you do have a, a major flood event. But okay. it is flawed. All right. That, that item will be on the next agenda. Anything else from you, Lynn? You want to get a report? Uh, just real quick, I'm just going to give this to Miss Lynn. This is t town of uh, Horn Hills. That's their estimate for their lighting there for that cost and light. Um, I was going to go real quick. Our ARPA projects kind of give you guys an update on where you are money wise for each um, of the things. I'll start with District 1. Uh, let's see here. Mr. Northey, you have approximately, you've spent, we, we just finished up TT Clark Road. Um, and to date, you've spent $231,813. So you got roughly $18,000 left uh, on your ARPA funds. This true, Mr. Smith. We're we're we have depleted your funds. <laughs> we we uh, we did uh, um, we did Wallet Road. We did a patch, pretty much a pass job on Wallet Road. We did uh, W. Coleman Road up there at the lake. Um, District three, Miss Holmes. We have done approximately two hundred twenty-six thousand four hundred eighty-five dollars in your district. On uh, uh, it was uh, Glen Chambers, Old Farm, and a portion of Canada eighty-nine. And we spent two hundred twenty-six thousand dollars, and you got roughly twenty-three thousand dollars left. And of that twenty-three thousand, I was going to talk to you about yours, because I don't know how we're going to all spend this money. But uh, twenty-three thousand dollars would actually probably do the uh, Tedder Road that we had originally had on our our rebuild plan. Um, it would pay for the the paving of that road. It's roughly a thousand feet, and I did an estimate cost yesterday, and that that money that we could actually probably use that I money really to do. I really think these commissioners should just. Give me very no, extra. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I'll, I'll let y'all discuss. Well, anyway, well, I got we have a room that I don't want to touch. Oh, because knowing that we have the most dirt roads anyway in that district, we need all the help we can get. I'm not now, uh, as far now as far as District Four, Mr. Uh, McGahey's district, we have spent um, one hundred ninety-eight thousand eight hundred ninety-one dollars, but we have. We've covered uh, Brogdon, Wagonwheel, Pruitt, Kirkpatrick, Tobacco, and Memory Lane. They're all short roads, and we'll expend all of his money um, after today. What so, roads you got? A bunch of short ones. They were all short, short roads. But now the chairman uh, spent his, uh, Chairman White spent his roads on the, on the golf trail. Um, he was given 200000 for each. You, you were given a quarter of a million each. Um, he has spent 105000 so he has roughly $94,000 remaining um, in his funds. So. I've run out. I heard that. <laughs> okay. That's true. But that's where we are on that. Um, other projects we're going with, um, like I said, we just got through the TT Clark Road on paving. We're doing memory lane today. I staked out uh, 107 uh, Wednesday of last week. I had a class on Thursday in Troy. I wasn't able to get it graded out and was off the weekend and uh, yesterday was extremely busy but tomorrow i will grade out 107 or at least probably get half of it done tomorrow we'll blade it up it's not off bad i just gotta get the final touches it's been sitting for a while i'm just gonna double check the grades on it and hopefully we'll have that paid before the year's end um on the on the main section did, right did the rain not mess up that very bad it's pretty it's, it's base it's base so we're, we're, so we're pretty good, good on it okay, good. so um, but that's what well, we're getting very, very, very close to it. I hope to have that one done before the end of the year. Okay. Um, that big, that big section. The 107 will be paved. The, the, the end, in, interior in, section, yes. Interior section. It won't be finished out right. on each end. Yes. But we'll have the, the big, the big section done. I'll, I'll better get my shoulders because it'll be a two-inch drop off. I have to go back and get, get that uh, uh, topsoil. We still have a big topsoil pile there. 
and I'll take that dirt to put, finish that out up there. Um, we're uh, in a process of doing our FEMA projects, our Hurricane Sally. Um, we've got a lot of, I think two of our groups are getting close to being finished, so we'll generate a little more revenue because they're, they're large projects. We've got to be completed with all of them in order to get uh, our check for those. And we've got a lot of money out, and I'm just Karen will be glad to see when we do get some coming in. Um, our, uh, our FLAP projects were, uh, we've had our, our hydraulic review about two or three weeks ago. Um, I'm working on the, the survey of those, those projects. Um, our Christie Lane project with uh, um, right here in town in District um, uh, Two's um, in Mr. Smith's district, uh, there uh, close to the John Deere place, there at the um, cemetery. Uh, we're looking at you know paving that portion. Uh, it will be paid for, or at least the portion to, to their their gate entrance by the, uh, the developer. We're going to do the the, the build. And, and build the road and con we'll construct and do everything to it. They'll just reimburse us for the materials that we did on the job. So um, I'm, I'm in the process of trying to get that one surveyed as well. I haven't started that one yet, but I'm fixing to on that one as well. Um, but uh, uh, George Lundy, um, uh, Connecticut River Church Road, and Hogfoot are our three uh, um, flat bridges. And I like some work on the hydraulic reviews on those as far as getting the hydraulic data to them. On those bridges, they've already, we've already got them sized. I just got to submit the actual data so they can go through Scour and everything on that for for that. And then um, our Horn Hill Bridge, that's on our our rebuild money. And we've already getting ready. But we've actually met with with the state on that one as well. While they're doing the hydraulic review, we're going to actually do a little bit of changing on it. Um, we we um, I actually raised the bridge up a little bit to help on a vertical curve and on, on speed. But they agreed that we could probably just keep it down like it was. So it's going to be less impact on the site. Be a little bit, a little bit quicker to build that project where I had it uh, initially done, but uh, we're, we got that one going. Um, and Cross Murray. And Cross Murray, I'm still in the pro. I got the deeds this past week for last first of last week from uh, the surveyor for the last the other two landowners, and I hope to get. Um, I've been in discussion with one of the landowners or both of them already. But uh, I hope to get one of the, the smaller pieces done, hopefully next day or next day or two on that one. That's the one so, down at the entrance. That's the very entrance, yeah. But uh, and the other ones uh, is in a trust, and I, it's it's more it's a more legal thing. I'm just as far as getting the, the correct things, and I'll get that to Morgan as well. We'll get ready to do that. But uh, um, our local attorney's handling uh, that here uh, in town. So that's where we are. All right. What's Please. the going rate to pay a mile of road right now? About one hundred eighty thousand dollars a mile, I and mean, it's it's updated. It's about one hundred eight dollars a ton, and I don't have a calculator in front of me. I can tell you, I'm not offhand, but that's about what it's running right now. One eighty is good. Is that material only, or is material that only? That, that, that's that's no, that's just laying. Probably that's that's laying. Quarter million to. That's just laying the asphalt. One hundred eight dollars a ton. Okay. Um, you can borrow your calculator. I'll sure. give it to you just for two seconds. I can tell you what is a foot, and then you can go from there. I want from start to finish, not just the asphalt. I know it's a guesstimate, but every road. <clears throat> it's about $26 a foot, what it cost. Let me see right here. Hundred forty thousand. Our current price is about one hundred forty thousand a mile, okay. including dirt. Work. No, that's just strictly asphalt. That's, right. that's strictly asphalt. It's about one hundred forty thousand a mile. That's, is that asphalt or chip? That's asphalt. Chip. Chips coming about about sixty to seventy percent less, or about thirty percent less than that that cost. Thirty seven percent, I think, uh, less than that cost. <coughs> Any other questions for me? We have to get you to start making a slide to put up there so we can track. Too much going on. All right. Thank you. Uh, yes, ma'am. On 107, I thought I was told the road would be completed by the end of the year. No, just that middle section. I mean, how much longer is it going to take on the road? To pay them? We're going. We're going. I'm letting. I'm letting the 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 55 in the contract. There's just too much traffic and too much got to be done on the on the highway there for us to do that work. So I'm thinking we're going to let that contract so we get it awarded. 
on that portion. So it's going to speed up pretty quick. What about tying into into the old road on our end? The county. Well, we're going to do that one our, ourselves. It's just tying in there. We're going to do a little, some improvement. There's been concern about where it's coming out mm -hmm. on the hill in front of the home. We're going to do some stuff to help minimize the um, them stopping. I guess there on that on that end right okay. there. All right. But I just got I got to get like so we got to get the shoulders right before I don't I not want to because um, I didn't want to get the the, the the ties done until we had that middle section absolutely completed. Yeah. Because uh, um, if this gets opened, to, if if it gets opened up when they start cutting these, opening these ends, they could really tear that road up, and we'll be fighting it for a, a while. So I want to make sure we got everything good and established before I make the ties. Because well, we still got to do some shoulder work once they get the asphalt down and get that done. We got a good stand of grass. Don't get me wrong, but we've got to come back though and, and flush out the shoulders and get a good stand there as well. All right. But just as soon as we get that done, we're going to let the other the con the, the 55 contract, and then we'll make the tie on the on the far end. So. so. Oh, it'll be up by spring. I hope by before spring of next year. Yes, ma'am. How I many did. years, Lynn? It's three. We're going three and a half. Almost four years now. Okay. Yeah, COVID hurt us bad, and a uh, lot of lot of factors that that factored into it. But that's since we started trying to acquire the land, right? Mm -hmm. From the time the bridge was closed. Yeah. No longer uh, longer than that. It's been longer than that. Yeah, we actually got we secured funding. Yeah. Yeah, we we secured the funding. Um, yeah, right. but it's we just a land a, transaction in the middle of that, and it just. I knew that took a while. Like it took a long time. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you, Lynn. Yep. Thank right. y'all. Any other staff reports? Commissioners, what do you have? Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> We enjoyed the Christmas parades, didn't we, Tommy? Sure. Um, we discussed in our our, uh, our budget about having the GPS on all the, all the county equipment. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't get clarifications. Y'all want every piece of my equipment, correct? Except for our basic our piece that we don't use profit once every year. Is that what y'all y'all agreed to? Y'all want on every one of our, uh, our every one of our trucks, everything, correct? Anything to use Trackers. on a regular basis? Yeah. All right. Um, as far as, I didn't get a list because I got the guy calling me. Um, uh, Mr. Dan's been giving me a, a bus. I'm trying to get this back done before sometime in January. Uh, but well, since I got all the department heads in here, we've got uh, um, my engineering office, got Kevin's maintenance, Tammy's cats, uh, Chuck's mapping and appraisal, um, the arena, I I've guess. Got a, one arena, one in home services. And home, ser home services, and then uh, EMA. I believe that covers everybody, correct? Do we get maintenance? Did he say maintenance? I yes, yeah. Said okay. Did so I, I, if I can, I think y'all may have sent me that before, but y'all can either drop me an email with uh, make, model, and uh, serial number and mileage of the vehicles that are going to put on this. Okay. So, but if y'all discuss with other departments what you require for them, I know this, I think Tim, you've already got something similar. Mm -hmm. Y'all require, y'all want to yeah, buy on this system? Everything or? but the truck. The original. The original vote of the commission was every vehicle was supposed to have GPS except for the sheriff's department. Um, that's what the exemption was only to them. Um, but since then, like I say, say, Tammy's got equipment that's changed it. But do y'all want it all on this one system, or are y'all wanting to? I think it'd be simple on dip? one system, just because it's something in one thing, and not somebody got this, somebody has this, somebody has this. To me, I think it would just make it simpler for everyone to be on the same system. So. Pretty much it stands then as your original order that mm -hmm. all vehicles, with the exception of the Sheriff's Department. The CATS already has something right now that they're using? We, we have a um, camera system that has, and also the new dispatch software that tracks, we can just put our mouse right over, shows and tells where our bus are. But I mean, I'm happy to go ahead and put these on too to be a part of, you know, but, but yours is, is basically new with the new software you got, right? Mm -hmm. So why, why spend the money on I mean, I understand what you're saying. Everything under one umbrella, but... Now, the only thing not covered for cats would be the mechanic truck. I would need that on Yeah, the yeah, exactly. Bus, you get that. But the buses, I mean, they're, they're covered with something new already. It'd be cheaper, save the money. Did we pay for that on your system? I, it, it comes out of cats. So, 
if you took it out of that and put it on the other, then everything's still part of the same blank. blank. But we, you, you, that's related to your dispatch, and I don't think we can we can't abandon that one. You've got to have that for the dispatch. Okay. So, uh, we'll maybe we can move forward with the understanding that they're all going to be covered with a question on cats, and let's see if if cats we're getting what we want. Still need the, the if, we're, if we're getting what we want with what you have, and make sure we're in agreement in it. And if not, then we can duplicate it. We can have this new system on that as well. So, okay. Does the uh, sheriff's department also include the jail vehicles? It was. He's excluded. Huh? Well, his are excluded. He has his own tracking I've, or whatever. I believe that it that it was excluding that whole umbrella who, under the sheriff at the time they did that. I'd have to go back and pull the minutes, but I want to think that they did exempt them all. I think there was some question before because you've got transport going on and. You've got, um, you know, someone riding up down the road with inmates that it would be nice, I think, at some point, if you did have the ability to look and make sure everything's okay or where they were. But I do believe they were excluded before. Now, I asked the question to our, <coughs> our GPS, our new vendor that's going to be doing this. I asked him to the state how many sheriff's departments he had that he had on record that he's doing GPS on. He gave me a big fat zero to the whole state. Yeah. So it's not, it's not anything uncommon. Yeah. Uh, but I just want to make sure we get head count. I'm already going to get stuff on the equipment and try to get everything put all in. So, so if y'all can just give me a, I think everybody's got an email, just drop me an email with the vendor and just say GPS, uh, just put it in the subject GPS and I'll let them get from there. Okay. Any other comments, commissioners? Karen, do you have anything? There is a barrel race set going on at the Covenant Center Arena this weekend. Go out and watch the cowgirls do their thing. We also have um, our new app that we've been working on for many years. Uh, is actually live now, but not in the form of an app. It's in a website uh, a link right now. Eric, you said the app would be coming in the near future? The app has been passed to the company's development team. So they are currently building it, and it's got to go through an approval process on the Play Store and on the App Store. And then they'll give us a beta to review for a couple of weeks, and then it'll finalize. So probably 30 to 60 days. But the link we're going to have it on our website. Basically, it's got the whenever you pull up that link, it has an area for knowledge base, which is frequently asked question type things that I've got um, uh, someone working on it currently to link it to our frequently asked questions on our web page and then we have um, the re request for service area that they would select that and that's when you can drop down and pinpoint your location um, and it will uh, allow you to select a category like if your problem is garbage you can pick that uh, residential garbage tab and then you could put in your complaint and then it goes to the proper uh, uh, reporting authority uh, for review and hopefully to have that solved so um, we be doing that <laughs> so that that is going to be a link that will be on our website and eventually in the app form so that it would help people that are trying to get information if there's a pothole it will let them they can sit in their vehicle at that link and report that pothole and it will gps that to the proper okay. area anything else do you have anything more yeah. all right if there is nothing else uh, motion to adjourn will be